Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Tuesday online devotion. My name is Billy, one of your campus missionaries here in Victory Quezon Avenue. And so as we start, let me start with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you that we can come to you in humility, Lord Jesus, and rest on your presence and in your goodness. We worship you, Lord Jesus, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's worship our Lord Jesus Christ. God, we worship you today. With all our hearts, God, with all our minds, with all our strength, Lord. My life is a pen of a ready right. I am the furnace and you are the fire. Hearts, oh God. No. 
nothing I'm holding to All of my life is yours alone I don't have much to bring But you can have Lord Jesus, we worship you. We give you praise and take our heart, Lord Jesus. If there's something in our heart that's hindering us in worshiping you, take it away. Lord, we want to come to you and we want you to reign in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. What a great time worshiping with all of you tonight. And as we start, once again, good morning for those who just um, tuned in. And this is our Tuesday evening devotion once again. And so today we will be talking about covenantal obedience. Covenantal obedience. Covenant means it is an agreement between two parties or two or more persons. Agreement between two or more persons to do or not to do. And so, our scripture is found in Micah chapter 6, verses 6 to 7. It says here, With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before Him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams? with ten thousands of rivers of oil. Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? Verse 8, He has told you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require from you? But do justice and to love kindness. And to walk humbly with your God. Micah is one of the twelve, one of the twelve prophets, minor prophets. But for me, he doesn't seem to be minor prophet because during his time, during his time, Micah is tasked or he is known for the message that he delivered about justice about judgment, and about restoration. And the people back then, both um, the Judah and the um, northern kingdom had abandoned the ways of God. They oppressed the poor. And they rejected the Torah. The first five books of the Bible, they rejected the laws of Torah. And so as Christians, every step, every step that we make points to actively pursuing our God. Christianity is not just about observing 
observing traditions or commands. But it's all about best experiencing our God. Personally and with other believers. Christianity is best experience with God and with other believers. At the end of this series, our heart and our hope is that all of us, we will journey with God with zest or with enjoyment in our hearts. And in the last series, in our last TED or Tuesday evening devotion topics, we learned about the attributes of God, who He is, and how good He is. That He is also a life giver. And that He is also a generous God. And that we, as Christians, should respond to who God is as well. And imagine with me a relationship, a relationship that doesn't have a give and take attitude. The question is, one way lang ba dapat yung relationship? If I will, I, I'm to ask you, yung tungkol sa relationship ninyo, one way lang ba yung relationship ninyo? Di ba merong give and take? Okay, sa relationship na meron tayo, be it in your girlfriend, husband, wife, or boyfriend, or even sa friends ninyo, merong give and take na tinatawag. And so the same way with God. God has given everything to us. The question is, one way lang ba yung relationship natin with God? Another question I want us to meditate here is that what can we give to God? Ano yung pwede nating ibigay kay God? What do we give to God in light of His character, in light of what He has done for us, and what He has for us? What can we give to God? Actually, one thing we can give to God is our obedience, our heart. That's why in the book of Micah, this is, this is prophet Micah reminding the people of Judah, reminding the people back then that they should obey God wholeheartedly. Is called covenantal obedience. And wherein two parties are involved and two parties agreed for something that's going to be best for them. Actually, if we will obey God, it's not God who will, uh, who will uh, merit it. Hindi si God ang makikinabang actually. You know what? It's going to be us. Tayo po ang makikinabang as we obey God. But that's what He wants from all of us as well. Our obedient heart. Because walking with God means walking in obedience. And as Christians, we walk with God. And so as Christians as well, we walk in obedience to His commands. And so, what should we bring to the Lord? In the verse that we've read a while ago, it says in the first um, two verses, verse six, verses 6 and verse 7. Okay, sabi doon, okay, covenant obedience in the scripture, it's burnt offerings, thousands of rams, and even child sacrifice for his transgression. So yun, yun ba yung ibibigay natin kay God? Actually, Micah is giving a warning to those people. It's not bad to give offerings to God. Hindi naman masama yun eh. Pero yung problema, yung puso nila. Dun sa ginagawa nila. And this is a reminder for them that the sacrifice that they're doing is not an entry fee. Hindi siya license. Hindi siya license para mapatawad. Bagkus, ito po yung tinatawag nating obedience sa puso natin. That it should be 
an avenue for us to say sorry, to ask for forgiveness to God. It is an avenue for God to administer, administer grace and forgiveness to the repentant. But it was the other way around. And so I hope and pray that when we offer something to God, our heart, when we obey God, it is us worshiping God wholeheartedly as well. You know what? Once again, I've said this a while ago. Offerings are good. It's not bad. It's just the matter of our heart. And so when we offer to God, we should give it wholeheartedly. And the question is, I'll be going back to the question I asked a while ago. What can we give to God? And let me rephrase it. What does God require from us? And the succeeding verse, verse 8, it says, this is what the Lord requires from us. To do justice. To do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly. To do justice, it's a broad term. Ang lawak po ng ibig sabihin. But this is what it means. To do justice is to treat people fairly. To treat people fairly. Having personal integrity in our relationships. Relationship at school, relationship at our um, office, relationship even in our homes. And also, to do justice is giving people their rights. Respecting others. And also using your influence for those who doesn't have. That's what it means to do justice. Will this be easy? It'll never be easy. Hindi po magiging madali. But the grace of God will enable us to do justice because His grace is always available for all of us. And the next point is to love kindness. What does it mean when we say to love kindness? To love kindness is caring. Caring for the people, which means praying, pray for the oppressed, pray for even for your enemies, serving as well. Serve the people. You serve the people to the best way that you can. Through your abilities, through your skills, through the talents that God has given you. Serve the people. Serve even the elderly. Also, ministering to the people. Ministering using the word of God. Again, it will never be easy. But the grace of God is with us. Also, by giving a helping hand to those who are in need. This is what it means to love in kindness by caring, by caring to the people around us. Last but not the least, to walk humbly. To walk humbly is not an easy requirement that God requires us to do. It's not easy. It's not an easy task for us to do. Loving God, meaning to say, walking with God. When we say, I love you, Lord, we should walk in His manner. We should walk in obedience. We should walk with God. Every day, every day is a day wherein we can walk humbly before the Lord. And when we say walk humbly before, before the Lord, it means... It means under His will. Walking under His will. The question is, naririnig po ba natin si Lord? Naririnig po ba natin siya? What is His will for all of us? When we do this, when we do this, gratitude and obedience will just flow. When we do this, 
gratitude and obedience will just flow. As we walk humbly, it will just flow. It will just flow. And to walk humbly is being faithful. Being faithful with the little things that God has entrusted us. Being faithful with our jobs. Being faithful with the people that God has entrusted us. Being faithful with the tasks that God has given us. Because God himself did not withhold his one and only son who died on the cross for you and I. What can we offer to God? What can we give to God? I hope and pray that today we'll gi- the good news that we receive to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly, we will be able to walk with God. We will be able to do this wholeheartedly. Join me in prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this reminder. Thank you, God. It's not easy to walk humbly. It's not easy to love in kindness, especially to those unlovable people. It's not easy to do justice. All this, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that it's not easy. But with your grace that will enable me, I will be able to do this. Thank you, Lord, for as I obey you, as I walk with you, Lord Jesus, gratitude will just flow. As I walk humbly, Lord Jesus, obedience will just flow. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that obedience is better than sacrifice. Lord, I acknowledge that what you need from me is my heart, my obedient heart. Lord, I pray for those people right now who are having a hard time in obeying you, in obeying the task, the commands that you want them to do. Lord, I pray that you will give them the grace that will enable them to to say yes. Lord, I pray that you will strengthen them with your spirit, Lord God. We thank you, God, that the power that comes from you, the power that comes from you will enable us to say yes to what you want from us. We offer everything to you, our whole body, Lord Jesus, our mind, heart, and soul, Lord Jesus. We want to obey you. We want to walk with you for the rest of our lives. In Jesus' name. Let's worship our God once again. I don't have much to bring, but you can have all the love of me. Because you make the broken. song says, you have my heart. Lord, cleanse my heart. Every time I go to the battle, Lord Jesus, prepare my heart. Lord, walking with you will be tough, but I know 
that it will be worth it. Walking with you will never be easy. Covenantal, covenantal, covenantal obedience is not easy. Walking with you in obedience is not easy. But this will motivate us to do good deeds. This will be our motivation to love others in kindness, to do justice, and walk in humility. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you everyone for joining us in our Tuesday evening devotion. We hope to see you all next Tuesday. God bless everyone.